just a review. I know, um, I think you had a lecture on this, a heart house. So we all know the etiology. Uh, commonly, it's by cuspid aortic valve when they calcify. Um, in the Philippines, rheumatic is also common. Senile calcific stenosis, so valvar and supravalvar narrowing. So under this um, pathology, I would be discussing also the hokum. Pathophysiology, it is very important to know the pathophysiology of the valve disease because it's going to be based on that, how your pressure changes or your pressure tracing changes. So the pathophysiology in AS is, as we know, there's narrowed aortic valve, so there's going to be resistance of flow if the blood flows from the LV to the aorta. Therefore, there's going to be a gradient. There's going to be a drop of aortic pressure as against elevated LV pressure. And of course, because of that, there's going to be compensatory hypertrophy. Up until it reaches to a point where there's going to be compensatory hypertrophy um, decompensation, there would be muscle degeneration, there's going to be LV dilatation, and eventually you would have low ejection fraction. And that's the time you're going to also have changes in your physical exam, okay? Because there's going to be changes in the gradient again across the aortic valve. And that's also the time where you're going to be needing like the dobutamine stress or, you, um, you know, the thing that you could increase your systolic function or your ejection fraction so as to see the real or to compute for the real AVA. Okay, so this is the hemodynamics of aortic stenosis. Let's go back. Uh, as I have mentioned kanina, di ba, yung i-memorize nyo na to, kapag sistole, dapat magkatabi o halos magkapatong si aorta at saka si LV pressure. But notice here, okay, notice here the LV, this is the LV tracing, the LV pressure during sistole is a lot higher than the systolic aortic pressure. Okay, so pag kukunin mo yung gradient from here minus this one, that's the peak to peak gradient, systolic, peak systolic gradient. Okay, um, and because of that gradient, there's going to be turbulence, and therefore you would end up with a systolic murmur. Okay, so this is a tracing of um, a patient. There's actually two catheters here. One catheter is in the LV, showing this waveform. So this is an LV waveform. And then there's another catheter sa FA, or femoral artery. So fem femoral artery is just the same as that of the, the um, aorta. It's just, that, it's just that sometimes it's a lot, a bit, a bit higher because of the uh, amplification, the peripheral ampli amplification. Okay, so what's this? This is aortic stenosis showing the gradient, peak to peak gradient. To compute for the mean gradient, ipaplanimeterize nyo to, and then you get the mean gradient. Uh, notice also the waveform. Di ba kanina mas nakikita mas brisk dapat yun? Dapat pag ganyan yan? Dito, ito yung tinatawag na pulsus tardus. If this were of smaller amplitude, you also call it... Ano isa? Parvus. Kaya parvus et tardus. Ito ano lang siya, tardus, kasi medyo malaki pa rin yung amplitude eh. Okay, what is the peak to peak gradient of this patient? So, what you do is, usually kapag uh, sa cath lab ang ginagawa natin, di ba, pag sinus, we probably get a uh, mean of 5 systolic, systolic uh, pressure nung, nung LV, tapos mga 5 average nung 5 na systolic ng aorta mo, and then, imo minus mo yon to get the peak to peak gradient. This one has 70 millimeters peak to peak gradient. Okay, there's another, uh, there are two catheters here again. One catheter is in the LV and one is in the FA. Showing again the gradient, peak to peak gradient. And then what they did was they pulled the catheter from the LV. Papunta sa aorta. So it again demonstrated this one. The gradient from here to here. Notice uh, this is still LV. It's um, smaller because of the PVDs. Oh, what about this one? The catheter was pulled back from the LV going to the aorta. Diagnosis? Yes, there's no gradient. 
Okay, so kukunin mo yung average. Sometimes ito yung parang yung catheter width. So kung meron ka nito, you get the, the, the mean or the average of this and this one. So it's actually normal. There's no gradient across the aortic valve. So ang abnormal lang dito ay ito, mataas yung kanyang LVEDP, which is at 40. Uh, because of that, you would end up with the following physical findings. You would have a prolonged duration or a gradual upstroke of your pulse, which is your TARDUS. And then your JVP may be normal if failure is still absent. Um, palpation, uh, it, the LV is usually not replaced, but it is sustained. Auscultation, you know this na. So S1 may be normal. S2 uh, usually is single lang. T2 pa rin yung naririnig. But, um, pwedeng umabot sa point na severe yung aortic stenosis such that mas nahuhuli ng mag-close si A2. Normally kasi mas mauna si A2, di ba? So mas nahuhuli ng mag-close si A2 kasi nagkakaroon ka ng delay ng closure because of the AS. Therefore, magkakaroon ka na ng paradoxical S2 splitting. S3, when you have LV failure or decompensation. S4, when you have sinus rhythm and you have LV hypertrophy. Because you're going against, the atrial contraction is going against the high pressure. And of course, your systolic ejection murmur. We don't have to discuss that because I know you know that now. ECG findings would be, of course, LVH. Rhythm usually sinus. And there sometimes would be, you'd have LA enlargement because you're going against uh, high LV pressure. X-rays, um, alam nyo to, yung, yung hypertrophy, di ba, hindi siya displaced, pero may rounding lang siya. Calculation of mitral valve, or the valve, I'm sorry, the aortic valve area, uh, this has been discussed at the PHA by Dr. Kimi. But, um, as, as, you know, to review, you could either use your Gorlin equation, which is your valve area is equal to your cardiac output over your heart rate, that's about ito yung in, in beats per minute, times the systolic ejection fraction times 44.3 times the square root of the gradient, okay? Um, you would notice that the valve area here in this computation is very dependent on the cardiac output. So that if you have, let's say, LV failure, mahihina din yung flow mo doon kasi pangit yung contractility. Okay? So if you have LV failure and um, mukhang mababa lang yung gradient, pero by echo yung planimetry mo eh maliit, you would suggest something that would increase your inotropicity or the LV contraction para mag-increase yung flow, mas magkakaroon ka ng true gradient. Ito. Ito yung shortcut, yung Hackey equation. Um, this is also based on the Gorlin equation, pero pina-shortcut. Ito yung madalas na ginagamit natin pag naka-scrub ka, tapos nag, nag, kailangan mo naka-agad ng AVE. So this is, again, dependent sa cardiac output. So this is just the cardiac output over the square root of the gradient. Okay, an example of which is the following. Ito, ito, you would notice medyo ito, um, this is not as common. You would notice that the peak-to-peak -peak gradient is just 20 millimeters of mercury. But if you uh, do planimetry and you get the mean gradient, it's actually 30 millimeters of mercury, mas higher. But most of the time, yung peak-to-peak -peak gradient ang mas mataas rather than the mean gradient. So, you get the mean gradient and then um, you, the, the cardiac output, alam nyo na kung paano mag-compute nun, di ba? Kasi may mga autosats ba yan. So you get the cardiac output and then the square root ng mean gradient which would give us mga 0.84 cm square. So haki, ito lang yung shortcut na ano, pag-compute. Uh, so exams, minsan may computation eh. So at least ito kung, kung ma-compute mo na yan, hindi, hindi ka man maging specific. Since multiple choice naman yan, alam mo kung ano yung pinakamalapit, yun na yun. <laughs> Okay, natural history ng, ng aortic stenosis. Um, we all know that actually they, they uh, end up with severe symptoms at the age of 60. Ang dapat lang tandaan dito is when the, the patient presents with angina, ang um, average survival rate is about mga five years, syncope, three years, and the failure, two years. Yun yung madalas na tinatanong din. Okay, under AS, but not quite the same.